Today we're taking a look at a great fan, the new Scythe Wonder Tornado. It's part of Scythe's newest generation of fans, and I'm really excited to be talking about it today. It offers some great performance and a great value proposition. So let's get right into it and let me show you why. First, a little bit of spec information. Again, like I mentioned, that this is part of a new generation of Scythe fans. It comes along with the Grand Tornadoes, which come in 2,000 and 3,000 RPM variants, while the Wonder Tornado is only a 2,000 RPM fan right here in the uh, third column. I do have a, a typo in there. It is an SPFDB bearing. In other words, that's a sealed precision fluid dynamic bearing. It is not a generation two bearing. It is a generation one bearing from Scythe. So I do apologize for that typo in this chart. It is good for a mean time between failure of 120,000 hours. So that is a very long life. It is made out of standard fan material plastics. It is not LCP like the Grand Tornadoes. So if you want uh, better materials, you're gonna want to go for those fans instead. One little interesting note about the Wonder Tornado is that it does appear to be quieter at the same maximum RPMs than the Grand Tornado, despite the better materials and the newer generation of bearing, while drawing less power. So that is a very interesting, I'm going to say conundrum, when taking a look at the Wonder Tornado versus the Grand Tornado. So the Grand Tornado, I would really say if you're, I have another video up about it, you're going to be wanting to take a look at it at the 3000 RPM range. And then what sort of I think kicked off this whole revolution is the Wonder Snail, and here's its spec information. So let's move on. Uh, a little bit of information about its bearing, seal uh, featuring a sealed precision bearing. There's nothing new about that. Um, a long lifespan, bearing pressure shaft, maintain high quality, and let's keep moving this along. And the next is some in pictures of, of the different blades of this newer generation of scythe fans so we got the wonder tornado with the grand tornado they share a fundamentally the same uh, geometry and design uh, with the blades there's just different materials going on which you can actually see in the substructures going on and then on the right side here we have the wonder snail with the wonder tornado and they once again share very similar um blade design uh, most obvious differences are the hub design hub size and the wonder tornado has smaller gaps it does appear that the grand tornado has even smaller gaps than the wonder tornado but they'd be in the same ballpark next we're on to the actual testing i performed so first is the case simulation test it represents a variety of different case sizes and down here in the blue boxes i have uh, approximate representation of how many fans would you would expect to fit lengthwise inside the case. So approximately 120 to 140 millimeter class fan in a six inch case. It represents a small form factor or a short throw distance, meaning the air blowing up from the bottom of the case towards the GPU, that would be that short throw distance. Then we got the nine inch mark, which is representative of your compact towers. Think would be able to fit a um, ATX sized case or sized motherboard i should say uh with 220 millimeter class fans in terms of its length uh but nothing more than that so you'd be able to fit a gpu in there that's approximately the same length as the motherboard would be a good idea i think of like a dell optiplex here and then we have the 11 inch mark the 11 inch mark is basically your standard mid tower cases think you're like your standard dell 5000 series uh corsair 550d uh fits into that you'd be able to fit 320 millimeter class fans across its, the length of the case. And then we have the truly large cases, which are 14.5 inches. Thin cases that are sized to fit 340 millimeter class fans. So uh, depending on what size case you actually want to purchase is the data point you want to pay special attention to. Now, all that information doesn't mean much without being able to compare it to something. So my first step in analyzing it is against my standardized control fan. It is based three parts A12 X25 to one part A14, two fans that are good in their respective categories in my testing overall. So above that line would be good, better, best, great fans. Below the line would be considered uh, almost good, okay, bad, terrible fans. So. The Wonder Snail Noise Normalize is a little bit of a poor performer, except at the 14.5 inch mark, 
where it seems to do relatively okay. While the Wonder Tornado sits fairly close to the control fan, a little bit underperforming it overall in most data points, but it would what I call sufficient. Next, we're taking a look at the fans at 100% PW fan signaling, and they are all spinning at roughly the same RPM. And let's take a look at the noise levels. The Wonder Snail is approximately, not quite, 50% noisier at 26 decibels versus 21. As if you don't know about decibel system, it is not a linear system. Uh, it is a um, it is an exponential system. So every 10 decibels is a doubling in noise value. So if you're looking at uh, five decibels, that would be 50% um, noisier. So the Wonder Snail is about 50% noisier than the Wonder Tornado. In terms of the performance values, the Wonder Snail is outperforming the control fan and is outperforming the Wonder Tornado, which is a surprising result. So right here is where you need to consider what is the most important thing to you, and is that extra noise value worth it to you to achieve that extra performance that the Wonder Snail is able to do in this particular application at 100% PW fan signaling. But again, all this doesn't mean much without comparing it to other fans, which is what I've done right here. I picked other fans that I consider representative for this specific category, so we got the Grand Tornado in here, the Wonder Tornado, the Apex Stealth, which is another recent fan that I tested, the Master Fan SF120M, the Wonder Snail. So I tried to get a variety of fans as well as high performers in my testing. Like the Unifan P28, the P12 is in here, and the Master Fan SF120M, which is what I'm tracing. I know I have a lot of blue lines in there that look very similar in color, which is why I'm trying to trace them with my mouse as I called out the fan name. And then right here, kind of smack dab in the middle, we have the Wonder Tornado. So what does that mean for it? It means that it would be just fine and dandy. It's basically an average performer. So there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing great about it. It would just do its job. How about at 100% uh, PDO and fan signaling? Here is where it... Uh, isn't quite as good. There are more limitations to it. The other fans that were round up in this grouping, most of them do have higher RPMs, but even the ones that have similar RPMs to it do outperform this fan, such as the Master Fan SF120M and the P12. And the A12X25 does outperform it as well, sitting right here in this red line. How about Noise versus airspeed. I use the 9-inch mark because I need air speeds over 0.5 meters a second, and the 9-inch mark gave me the most reliable result other than the 6-inch. But at the 6-inch mark, pretty much every fan looks good, so I need a data point that started to separate out the good from the bad fans. So that's why the 9-inch mark was chosen. And once again, if we take a close look at the Wonder Tornado, it is basically sitting in the middle. It isn't good. It isn't bad. It's in the middle, which isn't a bad place for it to be, it's just not exemplary, if, if that makes sense. I, it would be like getting a C, maybe a C plus. Now we're on to airspeed through my CPU air cooler. My cooler is the Noctua U12A. It has a 100 millimeter class uh, cooler, and it's a little bit on the thicker side, single tower with a fairly tight uh, thin stack. So I kind of consider it a middle ground between a sort of AIO type of liquid cooler and your older style air coolers that had wider fin spacing. To try to get a better pressure application, I do hope that in future testing, I will be able to add a thick boy high density radiator to get truly high pressure uh, scenarios for all of you but this is where I am right now. So in here we got the Wonder Snail, the Wonder Tornado and the control fan and in RPM versus airspeed which is the left graph we see that they land up pretty well. They actually outperform the control fan ever so slightly which is a very good result. It, and again the control fan is three parts A12X drive to one part A14 in this test. 
And then on the right side here, we have airspeed versus noise level. The Wonder Tornado is slightly outperforming at lower RPMs and then more or less matching the control fan as uh, airspeed increases, i.e. RPM increases. Uh, while the Wonder Snail is more or less underperforming where we would want it to be. It's not a terrible result, but it is on the noisier side here. How does they how do they compare against other fans I've tested? Well, in noise normalized results, the Wonder Snail is sitting right towards the bottom. It is not a particularly great result for it uh, in this test. And as another note, as I uh, move forward with this testing with help from viewers like you, I have a Patreon page. I have, uh, or you can join me as a YouTube member. I also have a Discord. Uh, hitting that subscribe button really goes a long way in helping support this channel. I do hope to be able to do longevity testing and consistency testing by purchasing multiple of every fan and being able to test them out uh, in kind of a repeat fashion to determine which which brands make the most consistent fans in good performance because that's what really matters so that you make sure that you're going to get the best fan each and every time. Uh, so anyways, back to this data set, the Wonder Snail is sitting right down there and then we got the uh, Wonder Tornado sitting at 1.3 meters per second of airflow. That is a pretty darn good result, if I do say so myself, sitting right in line with the A12X25. Uh, but higher end, we do see the Grand Tornado sitting right there. So, um, you know, how about at 100% PW fan signaling? Well, the Wonder Tornado can't overcome its limited R fan maximum fan speed RPM and so it doesn't get to the top performance slot. Mind, for most people, this sort of airspeed performance would be perfectly fine because the A12X25 is able to perform quite well too. This is scaled to show mostly the better fans. There are a whole lot of fans that are way down towards the bottom, but I want to show good, better, best, high performing fans in this uh, data chart. And one other thing to pay special attention to is the fan name, the RPM was spinning, and the noise level was generating. So the A12X25 is quieter than the Wonder Tornado for a relatively similar airspeed. Mind the Wonder Tornado is moving a little bit more air. So there are pros and cons, and it's up to you to determine um, what key feature you want to pay special attention to. But if you are looking for a little bit better fan than the Wonder Tornado, I would make our way up the graph. And if you want to stay at that 20 decibel mark, well, there aren't going to be too many fans that are going to meet that mark above there. But if you're willing to sacrifice, put up with 50% more noise, you can get, well, apparently the Wonder Snail, uh, Tough Fan uh, 12 Pro, as well as other fans like the P28 from Unifan, Leanly Unifan. How about in noise versus airspeed through the cooler? Again, as future testing goes forward and I have a truly dedicated system for doing testing, I want to add both thermal results to my airspeed values. Right now, I can only use an estimated value, which I have generated over here in a previous video. So here's the Wonder Tornado. It is nothing spectacular. It is more or less sitting in the middle of the road as compared to other fans. So again, it's not a bad result. It's not a great result. It is just middle of the road, which once again is not a bad place to be. It just is the middle of the road. Next up, we're taking a look at uh, CFM testing. CFM testing is my least favorite kind of testing. Uh, it basically is a scientific exercise and it doesn't tell you anything about how well a fan will perform through a heatsink or radiator or how well a fan will perform in a computer case because it doesn't tell you what kind of airflow patterns the fan generates. Anyways, I did the test anyways and for whatever reason scythe fans perform terribly in this test so we're going to move quickly through it. Here in these tests the control fan is just an A12X25 because I have a separate testing apparatus for both 120s and 140 millimeter class fans. And if we take a look at every other fan I've tested, well, the scythes are down here at the bottom. The Wonder Tornado was truly a terrible result, keeping things going, 100% RPM, and once again, terrible result. Even the Grand Tornado, with its 3,000 RPM, is sitting right at the bottom. So, for whatever reason, this test does not do well for scythe fans. 
I don't know specifically why. It's again why I would like enough support to grow this channel so that I can revamp my whole testing uh, to try to eliminate these flaws to really deep dive into why certain things are happening with some of these fans. Uh, CFM versus decibel reading, don't even need to look at. All right, into the last section, value proposition. So when I purchased these fans off Amazon, they were 12 US dollars. They may be a different price depending on where you live. So value proposition is just performance per dollar. So the more expensive fan is, the better its performance better be. So in terms of its, uh, in the case simulation test at the six inch mark, the Wonder Snail is kind of in the average mark. It's not a high performer. It's not a terrible performer. The Wonder Tornado is sitting above average. It's actually doing pretty well. Mind it's not in that absolute top performance spot that belongs to the TLG12. So if you're really on a tight budget, you're going to want to pay special attention here. At 100% pedal and fan ceiling, the Wonder Tornado does, again, better than average. It's doing pretty well. Mind, again, it's still not in the top performance spot. So if you want a little bit of a nicer looking fan or particular aesthetic, that's why you choose this fan, not because it's the best value here. How about at the 11 inch mark? I'm sorry. I used the slide from the uh, Grand, Grand Tornado review and I did not update that value from $12 and so it says 20. Ignore that 20. That should be a 12. The Wonder Tornado is a very good value. It is sitting well towards the top, so that is a great result. If we look at 100% pedal and fan signaling, it once again is sitting in the upper marks, but it isn't in that absolute top position. See if I'm testing, we're gonna just ignore because they did terribly, so don't even need to look at it. How about as a CPU cooling fan? Well, the Grand Tornado and Wonder Tornado do sit well towards the top of the graphs, but again, they are missing out on that uh, peak value proposition, but this is where in my opinion, for this particular test, you want uh, better performance, or if you know what kind of performance level you're trying to achieve, and just whatever fan best suits your needs for that uh, performance cutoff, if you will. And at 100%, still doing really quite well overall compared to other fans in terms of its value proposition. All right, so where does that leave me with this fan? Um, moderately good value proposition. Um, a good middle of the road in terms of noise to performance ratio. So it's not a bad fan. I'd actually say it's pretty good. Uh, it would get a recommendation from me. Um, certainly isn't the peak pinnacle of top performance, but I found nothing fundamentally wrong with this fan in my testing. This is the raw data that I generated for this fan. It takes me about one and a half to two hours to generate this data. So if you like the testing that I'm doing, I do ask that you join me on Patreon. You hit that subscribe button. So this is the raw data that I generated in my testing. It takes me about one and a half to two hours to generate this level of detail. So if you like what I'm doing, I ask that you consider joining me on Patreon or becoming a YouTube member. Uh, every little bit of money that goes into it is literally going straight into um, the, the upgrades for helping this channel grow, a dedicated test system, among other things. I have a bunch of videos that I did between December and January uh, talking about where I wanted to take this channel and what it's going to take for me to get there. Uh, so if you like what I'm doing, I ask that you do those things. If you want to discuss fans with me or computer cases or get different advice or just talk about whatever, I have a Discord page. It's linked down below. Um, I'm on it for short periods at a time, unfortunately. I relatively busy person but um hey if you've got suggestions for more fans for me to take a look at please leave in the comment section down below otherwise thank you very much for watching my video i truly appreciate you getting this far and i hope you have a fantastic day and thank you for watching computer tech and more